Hi guys. So if you've been reading our blog for a while or watching our videos, you'll know that um, Achilles tendinopathy is mainly seen as an overuse injury. So where you've um, done an activity that has not been prepared for, or you've done too much of an activity and you've overloaded it and it's now injured. But there is a silent type, type of tendinopathy that's been baffling researchers for a while now, where there's no clear training error or overload that can be blamed for this Achilles tendinopathy to have developed. It even happens in sedentary people who don't load their Achilles at all. And we're starting to understand that it may be down to a very low grade neural irritation or neural tension in the nerves. And that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. My name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from treatmyachilles.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your Achilles injuries. So have a look at our website um, if you want to know more about that. Good, so in this video, I'm going to look at what causes a silent tendinopathy. What do we know from the research? Then we're going to look at how or the role that um, increased neural tension plays, also what increased neural tension is. Um, and then lastly, how you can test for it, because it's quite simple, to be honest. So what causes a silent tendinopathy? The short answer is we're not really sure, but there are some clues from the research that it may be down to an injury to your peripheral nerves. Now, peripheral nerves are just a fancy word for the nerves that runs in your legs or your arms. So for the legs and for the sciatic nerve specifically, the one that's, um, that's appropriate to talk about here is the sciatic nerve. So, our nerves in our legs, we think, we all know that they control your muscles, so how well they contract, and you think of they're in charge of sensation, so what you feel. But we tend to forget that they're also in charge of blood flow, so how much blood goes to different tissues, including your tendons, your bones, your muscles, everything. They are in charge of um, the processes that stimulates um, new cells to be formed. So if the nerves are damaged, then you may not be able to, to regenerate your cells so well. They're also in charge of recovery processes. So where you've trained um, how well you recover, that process is um, controlled by your nerves. And then finally, an important one for them is they control inflammatory processes in your tissues. So what we're seeing from animal studies is that if they compress a nerve in the animal, usually poor rats, then what we see below that level of injury is that they're tissue that's made up of collagen, so their um, ligaments and their tendons, seems to degrade in that it's a poorer quality of collagen after a while and it's weaker collagen as well in those structures. So it seems that the peripheral nerve, if that's not healthy, can affect the quality of your collagen in your tendons. We're also seeing suggestions from the um, human studies about that in that people who's had sciatica in the past um, sciatica is where the sciatic nerve has been injured, um, very often down to back injuries. They seem to be more susceptible to Achilles tendinopathies in the future. So it's not clear cut evidence for this, but there's definite suggestions that this can be part of the cause for these silent tendinopathies. Um, and the researchers rightly so points out that not everybody with a silent tendinopathy has had a clear cut injury to the nerve because often if i mean if you've got sciatica you know you've got sciatica it's usually so painful you want to cut your leg off but you get people with silent tendinopathies with more subtle neural changes where there's just an increased neural um, tension so that the nerve's not quite free to slide and they too can get these silent tendinopathies so don't think that just because you didn't have nerve pain down your leg ever, that that can't be part of the cause. It may be a more subtle nerve injury that you've got. Um, just make sure that I'm not forgetting anything here. Yes, because the other important thing is um, a nerve can be compromised without causing pain. So you don't need to have nerve pain for a nerve to not be functioning 100%. And that's kind of what we see in our runners as well, that we see some of them will have um, absolutely no neural cause at all. It's just pure overload that's caused them. Others will see that um, there's a <clears throat> measure of overload, but there's definitely also a measure of increased neural tension. And then other people who contact us 
aren't even sporty. They don't load the Achilles tendons, but when we test them, they have a clear um, increased neural tension in their legs. So what is increased neural tension? Basically, our nervous system is continuous from the brain to the tips of our toes, to the tips of our fingers. As we move, the nerve is meant to slide freely because otherwise it will stretch and nerves don't like being stretched. Now, sometimes the nerve gets compressed along the line where it runs. So it can either be in the back, for instance, a disc pressing on it, but it can be more subtle that it's just really tight muscles and fascia holding on to it. And then in that case, it's not free to slide. So now that low grade compression can cause changes in the nerve and can affect its function. Um, and that seems to be to blame or may be part of why we get these silent tendinopathies. Now, interestingly enough, increased neural tension also seems to be linked to um, if athletes or runners specifically get recurring, and footballers actually, recurring um, hamstring strains and calf strains. Often they find those guys also have increased neural tension in their legs and they have to resolve the increased neural tension as well as strengthen the muscles up to get rid of it. And that's pretty much how we deal with Achilles tendinopathy patients as well. Every single online patient that we see will always test for increased neural tension as well. And if we find it, we'll give them exercises to take care of that as well as the Achilles strengthening program to get them back to running. Um, okay, so how do we actually test for this? You can't see increased neural tension on x-rays or MRI scans or CAT scans because it's so subtle. It's just, it's, there's not, yes, fine, if you've got a disc bulging and pressing on it, you can kind of see it there. But other than that, if it's muscles that's just tight and things like that, it doesn't show up. But you don't have to worry. There's a really simple test that you can do in clinic and that we do online as well with patients that can tell you everything you want to do. And I'm going to run you through that now. So it's called the slump test. And you may have seen it on some of my other videos so far. Let me just rearrange everything here. Up. Now, the important thing with a slump test is to not kill yourself off and try too hard. So you've got to be quite gentle because remember, we're going to stretch a nerve now. <laughs> Nerves are really robust things, but if you force them into pain too much, they come back screaming at you. So be gentle. So basically, we want to wind up the nervous system and put it under stretch. So remember, it runs from the, your brain to the tips of your toes. So you're going to roll that up. So the first step is you're sitting on a lovely sturdy chair. You place your hands behind your back. Now you place your chin on your chest to start stretching it in this area. And then you slouch down. So you bring your shoulders forwards to bend your spine. But I'm not just bending from the hips. I'm just collapsing my spine to where it will go. And that's as far as it will go. But you have to keep your head all the way in there, okay? Now in this position, you slowly straighten one leg out. Can you get your knees straight? And you'll notice my toes are pointed forwards. Now I can get my knees straight. You may only be able to get it to there. And then if you can, you also bring your foot back. Now, what do you feel at this point? Can you get the full movement? Or are you feeling quite a strong stretch down the leg? So wherever you feel that strong stretch, say for instance, you could only get your foot to there or your knee bent to there or straight into there. At that point, you lift your head up and check if it changes anything. So for me, it would be in this position. And if I lift my head up, I can feel the pull disappears. If I bring my head back down, it comes back to an extent. And then you want to test the other side because you want to see one side versus the other. So we start again, shut on chest, slouch down, hold the position, straighten leg out, pull toes towards you. Notice for how much pulling you feel in the um, leg and where you feel it. Lift your head up. Does that take the pulling away or lessen it to an extent? Put your head down. Does that increase it again? If it changes with how you move your neck, it means you've got some kind of increased, some level of increased neural tension there. Now, it is quite normal to have some gentle pulling there, like I did feel some pulling in there. But if you've got a full range and just a gentle pull, I wouldn't worry about it. If, however, 
you couldn't actually get your knees straight or your foot back properly and it was really quite a strong pull that changed with your neck movements. Then I would say that is neural tension that needs exercise to help address it. And it's really not rocket science, it's just about loosening up all the muscles that can get where the, where the nerve runs through. What I will say is if you have got increased neural tension and you can't get your knees straight, don't go and do loads of hamstring stretches because at that point you're actually stretching the nerve as well. You first have to loosen off your lower back and your glutes and your calf muscle where the nerve runs through before you then actually I tend to give people neural sliders rather than full on hamstring stretches. Otherwise you can actually cause yourself pain in your leg. So let me know if you've got any questions. And if you need more help with your Achilles injury, you're always welcome to consult us via video call. Look at the, uh, the link is in the, in the description of this video. Take care.